campers, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today we're in Carlsberg, um, Washington, and uh, which is a suburb of, of Squim in the Northern Olympic Peninsula. Today we're going to be working on a suburban 3500 furnace, and what's happening with this thing is it will uh, the fan will come on. When the thermostat calls for heat, the fan will come on, but we're not getting any ignition sound. So the fan will come on, but then the fan will turn off after an interval of time. Um, now, what we know, uh, if we follow the path of 12 volts, what we know is that the 12 volts will leave the furnace, go to the thermostat, and then it'll leave the thermostat, come back down to two uh, and cir circuits, if you will. The first one is a sail switch. Uh, my fan needs to blow enough, so my sail switch will be kind of moved up a little bit, and uh, which will make that circuit. And then the second and statement that it needs to go through, or the second um, proof circuit if that it has to go through, is a high limit thermostat. Uh, the high limit thermostat is usually on the back of the of the furnace in that heat exchanger area, where um, if there's a carpet or something over the uh, duct that's blocking that airflow, all that heat's going to back up into that furnace, and that high limit thermostat's going to trip out. Um, so because we're not getting the click sound on this furnace, because we're not hearing that, that, that and the click sound that you're hearing is going to be the solenoid, the gas solenoid making the click sound. And then shortly at, at almost simultaneously with the click sound, you'll hear a bunch of ticking sound, tick, 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 tick. And what that is, is that it, the igniter is striking an arc. Um, so we're not hearing the click and we're not hearing the ticking. We're just hearing the fan turn on and the fan turn off. So from our following of the 12 volt trail, what we know is that um, either the thermostat has an issue, the high limit thermostat on the back of the furnace has an issue, or the sail switch, has, sail switch has an issue. So as we're following that and circuit, we're not getting the thermostat and the sail switch and the high limit thermostat. So we're going to be troubleshooting one of those three issues. This RV, the manufacturer did not give us access to the furnace from the outside. All we see on the outside is the exhaust port. And so what we found, typically <clears throat> you'll see something like this, which is the return air vent. And so we'll take this off. Okay. And there we have the back of the furnace and I've already kind of loosened the screws. So we'll take this out and the first thing we see here, this device here on the back of a suburban furnace is our high limit thermostat. And you'll notice that it, th these are the tubes that get really hot. Um, there is no, um, there's a separation between the combustible heat air and the room air. So the room air is drawn between these tubes, if you will, and then inside the tubes is the combustion taking place, that propane, that oxygen, and all that kind of stuff. So the heat that's generating inside of here is being exported. That air is drawn in from the outside of the coach and going back outside of the coach, and then the air that's drawn over these coils is from, it comes from the inside of the coach and goes back into the inside of the coach. So there's no combustion, um, combustible air or anything coming inside your coach. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy right here. And I'm beginning to think that this guy right here might be our culprit. Um, I have seen these fail. And so let me try to uh, get another hand out here and get my headlight on and get my meter set up. Okay, so we have over here we have our meter set on um, our, our continuity test. And when we touch the two leads together, we'll do this with one hand here. You'll hear the meter beeping, okay? But beeping's not enough. You also need to look at the, at the value because... Um, there's um, uh, open, and when I touch them together, there's zero resistance. So just because it beeps doesn't mean something. You need to actually look at the numbers. Uh, it, my meter will beep even if it's 300 ohms, and sometimes 300 ohms might be the, the value going through a coil. Um, so what we're going to try to do here is with one hand, we're going to do this little trick here. So as of right now, there we go, uh, I'm touching these here but we were playing with this thing just a few minutes ago and this was open this circuit was open right here and now it's closed because we've let the furnace cool down a little bit but when the furnace um is on this will will it's like a toaster and when the toaster is ready that the, the thing pops and um so I'm kind of suspicious of this part right here. And we've already checked throughout the coach. We've looked at the floor vents. We know that there's good airflow. So there's not a restriction. Um, and these things do fail. And so um, there's no point in pulling the whole furnace out right now because I have seen that this has failed already earlier today. Um, so what we're going to do when now here's a test. If you suspect that this has failed, then you unplug the two sides. Okay, they just plug in right there. And you can make a jumper, okay? 
and um you know you just take a wire you take a jumper and you kind of connect them together and basically bypassing this thermostat right here and um see if your furnace will run for a little bit don't leave it unsupervised for too long because this is a safety device so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this thermostat and we're going to let the furnace run for a couple of days and we're going to follow back up with you guys and uh, let you know if that's what fixed the problem. But uh, this guy was giving us grief a little bit earlier. So uh, without having to pull the furnace out, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the problem right here. And now if you need to replace this, what you're going to need is you're going to need your model number from your furnace and you're going to need a serial number from your furnace. Um, Suburban has changed some of the... Um, designs of these thermostats uh they'll they'll keep the same model number but then a, there's a serial number change uh so you do need to verify that now on this one we're lucky on this particular furnace we have this furnace model number and then the the, the serial number for this part right here and um so that made it kind of nice uh or is that that's a serial number for the whole furnace so they made it nice here on the back side of this it's nice and easy um, so here we have the model number and the serial number for this furnace. And then we just make sure that we get the correct thermostat rated for this furnace. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put the new one on and let this thing work. And then we'll follow back up with you guys on a, in a couple of days. We'll follow back up with a customer to make sure that it's going to work for them. And we'll finish up the video. And hopefully that's all that the problem was. Okay. So we've, we've remade the, re we've replaced this thermostat a couple of days ago. And uh, now we're back just to follow up with a customer and um, it's been working fine. So um, on these intermittent issues, sometimes it's really hard to troubleshoot, but uh, we nailed it right out of the gate. With this one, we never had to pull the furnace out. Uh, so if you're gonna be troubleshooting these things, uh, you know, and it's an intermittent thing, let's start with something simple. And I would, compl I would replace one component at a time so that you know that you've made an effective repair. So hope these videos are helpful. This is Darren signing off and uh, happy camper say my RV works.